All right, guys, so I want to go over CVT. This is something that um, I think is probably the biggest hurdle for most people tuning. So um, your CVT is all this in here. So I just want to go over all the components, and this is going to be on your standard scooter. Um, and this is what is responsible for your engagement, your clutch, and then basically changing um, your ratios as you, as you ride. So in here, this isn't what I'd consider CVT at all. This is where your gears are, okay? This is your primary and secondary gearing. Um, you've, you've got bearings and seals back here in your axle as well. So um, we'll go over all the parts. So first off, let's start with the front part. So what you have here is you have your pulley. So we just refer to this as a variator, but you've got a pulley. On the back half of this is a drive face. So I had a variator sitting here somewhere. There it is. So how this works is you've got the radiator sits like that, kind of in a drive face here. So your drive face and your variator, or your drive face and your pulley, however you want to call it, sit like this. And your belt sits in there. So <clears throat> drive face back here there's rollers inside here okay so this moves in and out like this as you accelerate as you speed up these rollers inside here fly out and push this plate out bringing the pulley and the drive face closer together so as you're riding it's gonna sit like oops don't drop that clearance sale so as you're riding it's gonna sit like this okay rev it up this is gonna go more and more and more in like this therefore driving the belt from this lowest position all the way out to the top so that's your front in a nutshell. So how we're gonna, this is your drive face. This is a sweet one. We sell them, of course, um, Honda Elite, Honda Dio. This is your boss. This is the, the part that your pulley slides in and out on. This is considered a ramp plate. These, we call them your bushings or sliders, okay? And these are your rollers. So that's what your, your variator kit consists of. So most time you buy a variator kit, you get just this stuff right here. This is something extra. So that explains the stuff in the front and every bike is different, but this one's going to have um, your kicker cup here and that's what your kicker mates to, to turn this around. So your belt, everybody knows what a belt is. In the back, um, you've got your rear pulley back here and then you've got your clutch belt and your clutch and in here are your clutch springs. So, so I've got another pulley here. It's just all stuff I had laying on a shelf, so I figured I would use it. So this kind of does the same thing as the front, mainly that it moves in and out. So as you accelerate, I'm gonna take a video, this belt is at the very bottom and these rollers are gonna come out and they're gonna fly out like this. As that happens, as this, as this belt goes higher in the front, it's gonna suck down and go all the way down in the back. So that's where you get your ratio change. So right now, your pulley, don't drop this, is sitting like this. As you accelerate, it's gonna, widen out and your belt's gonna drop down inside there. So the way this all goes together is you've got your, um, this is actually too fast, super, super sweet product. I don't know what the E is actually, I didn't notice that. It's got E in two periods. Maybe that's extra, extra cool, I don't know. That's your contra spring, contra spring goes on there, okay? So once your contra spring's on, okay, this goes all the way down and this sits, in, the contra spring sits on there. Your clutch, depending on what type of clutch you have, you've got clutch springs in here. Clutch goes on like this. Your contra would normally be in here. You've got a nut that goes on here. Your clutch bell goes on top, okay? The way this works when you start the bike, so this is connected to um, a shaft that goes in back here. It turns gears, turns, turns your wheel. So just think about it like this is, um, I would explain it like this is your, your clutch on your car or whatever, where these are your pads. So as your motor's spinning, Centrifugal force is going to pull the pads out. These pads are going to fly out because they're going to overcome the tension on this spring. So if you have a stiffer spring, it's going to take more force and more centrifugal force and RPM to cause this pad to fly out to grip the belt. So as you're spinning your engine, you're revving it up. These probably don't grab until 8500 on this bike because it's a, a big Evo 94. So you start this thing up, you get it going. Your wheel's not going to move because these springs haven't they haven't loosened up to have these pads fly out to contact the belt. So a couple things 
I want to talk about here. So when you do, so let's say you've got a stock transmission, um, like on this Piaggio here, makes power at 5,000 RPM. So what, on a stock transmission, your springs are gonna be soft because it wants to engage soon, right? Your Contra, this spring here, is gonna be soft because it wants to shift early. Your rollers are gonna be heavy because it's gonna to wanna to shift soon. When I say soon, I mean early in the RPM uh, power band. So if you put a big bore kit on your bike and a pipe and a big carb, um, you got to change your whole transmission because now you move your power band to say from 5,000 RPM to 11,000 and this is going to want to shift way too soon. So you want to basically slow down the shifting effect, I guess I would call it, um, or have it stall longer. Um, so, so when you're doing your bike, very important things are when you're modifying your bike, your clutch springs in here are super important. Your Contra back here is really important and your roller. So those are three things you're gonna to wanna to change and tweak and tune as you go. Um, your clutch, I wouldn't say is an absolute requirement on every bike. Some bikes you can get away with the stock clutch, some you can't. This bike, I would destroy a clutch, a stock one um, fast. And, and also the stage six, where is it? There it is. The stage six has an adjustment screw. You go through these holes in here and you can adjust this. You can see right there, but basically, you pull these back more, you tighten the screw down, it pulls this pin backwards and stretches out the spring to change the RPM. So when you've got a, when you've got a um, clutch that's not adjustable, you gotta change these, these springs out all the time to change your RPM engagement. When you've got a stage six or a um, Polini, you can just put a screw in there, turn it down and change it. I can make this thing change from 8,500 RPM to 10,000 RPM in, in five minutes of adjustment. It's really easy. So. Um, this is the biggest hurdle for people. If your bike is super, super boggy from a from a um, standstill, likely your rollers are um, your rollers are too heavy, your contra is too soft, or your springs are not the right springs for the application. Um, and then I tell people the first thing I tell them to do is do the sharpie trick. And I've gone over that before. And you take a sharpie and you go from the top to bottom here, so all the way down here. Run the bike. And as you run the bike, this belt is going to ride up like this in this variator and erase it all. So if you end up with a belt that's, you know, rides like right here, you've got this much Sharpie left, that means your belt's not going all the way down in the back, it's not going all the way up in the front, and you're losing. Um, I had one bike where I was riding down about three-eighths of an inch, and I lost like seven miles an hour. So something to keep in mind. The other thing too, um, when it comes to belts, is if it's revving super high from a get-go and you lost top speed, your belt's probably worn out because what's going on is when this belt gets narrower, okay, when it gets, so this can't come in anymore. These two can't come together anymore because like this, okay, they can't come any closer. They can't come closer together when they're sitting, so if that makes sense. So this belt gets narrower, narrower meanwhile, this stays the same width, right, because it's mechanically limited to how far it can open. Your belt's not gonna ride up as high, and it's not gonna go down as far inside when it gets narrower. Also, your narrower belt is, is gonna ride further down like this, let me get my hands in here better, further down the pulley like that, okay? So that's gonna throw you off as well. It's gonna make you really boggy because it's gonna wanna spin this faster. The other thing that is hard to wrap your brain around, if your rollers are too heavy, your transmission shifting too soon, okay? What you're doing is you're changing the speed of this pulley, therefore your clutch is gonna grab sooner. So if you have a bike that revs really, really high and you have heavy rollers in here, you'll be fighting a few things because your, your clutch is gonna wanna shift sooner um, because because as your rollers are shifting, you're also changing the speed of this clutch because as this, as this belt comes down further, you're changing the speed of this. Your motor may not be changing much in RPM, but this is changing and it's causing the clutch to grab sooner. So a little bit weird to wrap your brain around. Um, and a couple quick things. I don't even know what this came off of, but um, this is kind of glazed over. It really helps to, to um, rough this up, hit it with some brake cleaner. Um, if you don't want it polished, of course, um, that's what you're, you're trying to stay away from um, but this one definitely is glazed over so hit it with some brake cleaner um, scotch bright buff it buff it and just scratch it up don't go crazy with a dremel or a screwdriver or your grandma's tools just uh, buff it out scratch it up rough it up with some heavy grit sandpaper um, like I said don't use dremels don't use tools on these because you second you take away any of this material you throw off the balance of this bell um, it's not good so 
gonna start this bike up real quick and I'm gonna rev it up and show you kind of how the transmission shifts. Bear with me, this one's loud um, and it, it revs really high. So it's gonna take a little bit to get this one to shift, but at least you'll see, um, you'll see how it works. So give me a second here. And then this is your kicker cover. These are your internals. These are a royal nightmare to get in and out and to get um, in place. And also there's a C-clip in here. So a lot of guys, if they're, if, if this comes out and the spring comes out, your C-clip is probably coming off, okay? So that's a pain in the butt. I hate doing that. And again, of course, all items we sell. This, uh, this motor is coming out and it's going into a Yamaha Zuma and it's gonna get shipped to a super rad customer in Massachusetts. So, we're just going to put a few on here and then I'm going to kick it, start it, I'm going to take it off so you guys can see what's going on. It makes it easier to see. And if you have a, um, if you have a CVT cover that's open in the rear, what I like to tell people is rev, if you're having issues, rev your bike up and see if the rear pulley is starting to shift before the wheel's moving. Um, before the clutch is grabbing because what that's telling you is your transmission is starting to shift way too soon. All right, so this bike has not been ridden for quite some time, but it's been crazy reliable. So Let's see if I can do it with my hands, see if I can hurt myself here. are um, I guess when troubleshooting your bike always check your transmission check your belt 
make sure it's it's the right width you can hop online and look to see what the factory width should be um, check your belt and then uh, make sure your clutch is in good condition and uh, if you're tuning it you're dialing your bike in again your clutch springs your contra your belt and your rollers not so much your belt Just make sure if you have a good condition belt it's fine um, it'll make sure it's within spe specifications your clutch springs your contra and your rollers are what you're gonna really change for tuning so um, they have different pulleys that have different um, uh, angles on the slots here that that's a whole nother see how this rotates when you set it down that's a whole nother story um, performance clutches make a huge difference um, clutch bells are nice variators make a big difference too they have different aggressive ramp plates but mainly I just want to go over how the CBT works um, and it takes a while to get your head around and we talk about shimming transmission we talk about um, making sure it's shimmed properly that's adding shims between here and here so it's gonna take this this and move it further out so maybe if you have a wider belt or your boss is short or something and you want to get this your belt right all the way down you shim it and you shim it it brings this further out so hopefully that helps make sense um, Bruce we're gonna pop this motor out it's hazy in here <laughs> and it's gonna go in this bike so um, this is gonna get EBS wheels and whatnot Jesus, you don't like the smoke gas. you don't like the smoke <laughs> that is old fucking gas. it's good for you Carter, watch your language. Could be children watching this. Anyways, hope that helps. You guys got any questions? Um, again, post up. Let me know. But uh, this was a one I've been wanting to do for a long time, just so you can actually see how it works. Um, All right, Bruce. This one's for you. Oh dang! Together. Let's see. Machine, machine is pretty rad. Gonna start on it. He he didn't believe we were gonna start on yeah. it. He thought we were lying to him. So this will get a radiator, full disc front end, naked bars. Um, so we'll go through this whole bike, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Motors everywhere. All right, share, subscribe, and um, ask questions. Thanks guys.